Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. In this and the next section, we're going to be exploring some advanced aspects of queries. So we're going to start out with a quick review of the basics. We're going to talk about structured query language or SQL. We're going to speak about aliases, use of expressions, and also order by. Now, if we look at the Create tab on the ribbon, you'll notice that we have two options when it comes to queries. We have Query Wizard and Query Design. Now, if I select a form in the navigation pane, so FRM student list, and then go to the query wizard, notice that we have four different options. Simple query wizard, cross tab query wizard, find duplicates query wizard, and find unmatched query wizard. Now the simple query, I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with this. Now we are going to do a simple query a bit later on, but we're not going to use the wizard. And we're also going to take a look at some of the other options in here a bit later on as well. Now the query wizard differs from query design in that it will essentially walk you through the process of creating a query. If you've used wizards for anything else in the past, it works along the same lines. And because we have something selected in the navigation pane, when we work through the query wizard, it's going to be based off of that. You don't have to have anything selected in the navigation pane to create a query, but it can be a little bit of a shortcut. Now for the time being, we're gonna cancel out of here and we're gonna jump into query design. Now query design basically allows you to create a query from scratch. So you can see here, we don't have anything in the middle here, but we do have the query grid down here or the QBE. QBE stands for Query by Example. And again, if you worked your way through the Access for Beginners course, then this should all look very familiar to you because we did do quite a lot of work on queries. Now we are going to be using the Query Grid in this lesson, but we will primarily be looking at SQL. So let's start out by creating a very simple query. Now the first thing we're gonna do here is we're going to select a table to add to the main window just here. So over in Add Tables, my pane is already showing. If you can't see your pane or it's closed down for some reason, if you go to the Query Design ribbon, you have an Add Tables button just here. Now also notice we have four different categories and underneath Tables, we have a few tables listed out here, but remember these are going to be the ones that are part of the front end. Most of our tables we have linked in a separate backend file. Now you'll find those tables underneath Links, if you want to view absolutely everything, just click on all. Because the table we want to use in our query is tuple students. So we can click this and click add selected tables at the bottom, or we can simply double click to add it to the grid. I'm gonna expand mine down a bit so we can see a few more of those fields. But the first thing we're gonna do here or the first query that we're gonna run is a really straightforward one. I just want to run a query that is gonna return a big long list of all of the students from the students table. Now, if I want to run a query that includes all fields, we can simply drag the asterisk down to the field area, and that's basically what it's going to do. It's going to select field tuple students asterisk, so everything from tuple students. Let's run the query and make sure that's working. Up on the query design ribbon in the results group, we have a run button. So when we click this, it's going to run that query and there are all of our students. So because this is such a simple query, this would be a great query to look at in SQL view if this is the first time that you're ever looking at SQL. Now we can switch to SQL view in the same way we switch to other views by right clicking on the tab and notice we have an SQL view in here. And this code is really simple and straightforward. We have a select statement, select tuple students asterisk, so everything from tuple students. So this SQL view is basically expressing the query using structured query language. Now I'm going to close. I'm going to say yes, I want to save the design of the query. And of course, it's going to ask me to give the query a query name. So I'm going to call this QRY query test one. 
Click on OK and you can see if you expand queries in the navigation pane, there is the query that we just created. And remember with queries at any point, you can double click to rerun them and get the results of that query. Now we can achieve really good results with the query grid. So why would we choose to use SQL? Well, the reason why is because it is a really popular language for working with modern databases, not just access. It is a universal language. So if you learn SQL primarily for working with access, it means that you have transferable skills to other database applications. There are also a couple of other reasons. There are a few things that can only be done using SQL. And also if you use the grid, some things are quite difficult to do when you want to start to run more complex queries. So once you do get used to using SQL, it is often quicker to create queries in this way. So let's jump back into the query and go into SQL view. Now, one thing to notice when you're thinking about writing your own SQL is the structure or the layout of the code. You can see here by default that I have my select statement and my from statement on two different lines. So we call these clauses. You don't necessarily have to have them on two different lines. You could put them both on the same line if you were conscious of space. So what I could do here is simply press the backspace like so. And we want to check to make sure this still works. Let's click on run and we get the correct results. So all is good so far. Now, another thing we always need to be conscious of when we're writing code is we want our code to be as simple and straightforward as possible. We don't want to have it bloated out with lots of unnecessary clauses and statements. For example, all of the data that this query is using is in the same table. We're just returning the list of all of the students from tuple students. So I don't really need to have tuple students twice in this one line of code. So what I could do here is modify this so that it just says select asterisks from tuple students. So basically select everything from tuple students. Let's run it again to make sure that it works and it does. Now, most SQL statements end with a semicolon and you can see that that is the case here. Now, if you forget to add a semicolon onto the end, then Access will add it for you if you do forget. So if I was to remove the semicolon and then run, it just adds it back in for me and the query will still run. Now, notice here in the query results, we have last name and first name columns. Now, if I wanted to just return specific fields here, not necessarily all fields, and the fields have spaces in the names, for example, last space name, first space name, we would need to put those in square brackets. So let's go back to our code. And instead of returning all fields, I just want to return the first name and the last name. That is what my code would look like. Select, we then have first name in square brackets because it has a space, comma, last name in square brackets because it has a space from Tibble students. Let's run the query and we now just get those two columns returned. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the concept of an alias. So I could change the SQL to say select first name as first and last name as last from Tibble students. So let's do that. So we're going to say first name as first, last name as last from Tibble students. So effectively what I've done there is I've set up aliases first and last for first name and last name. Let's run the query and we get the same result, which means that it's working. And notice what it does. It also changes the column heading. So now we just have first and last instead of first name and last name. Now I'm not saying that you would necessarily want it to look like this. I'm just trying to illustrate the point of an alias. Now we're not restricted to renaming the existing fields. We can create new fields too. So maybe I want to make a full name field. I don't want it separated into two separate columns. So we could change the code to this. And what we're basically doing here is saying concatenate first name and last name with a space in the middle. And remember ampersands mean join together and concatenate them as the full name. So when we click run to run this query, you can see that's exactly what it does. We now have a column called full name and we have the first name and the last name joined together with a space in between. 
Now, I want you for a moment just to think back to previous queries that we've looked at in this course. They were a little bit cleverer than this query that we currently have here, as they coped with situations where either the first name or the last name was blank. So we're going to build an expression in SQL where the first name is blank or null. So we now have an expression that deals with the full name even if the first name is null or not. Now let's run the query and make sure that it works, which it does. Now this isn't quite enough on its own. We also need to cover a situation where the last name is blank. So we basically need to embed all of this inside another if statement. And in this statement, we'll check if the last name is blank or not. So here we've wrapped another if statement around to account for if the last name is blank. Let's run the query to make sure it works, and it does. The final thing we're going to look at in this lesson is order by. And really, order by just lets us sort the selected records. Now to do this, I'm actually going to put from on another line and then underneath we're going to add order by and then we can select what we want to sort these records by. So maybe I want to sort them by the last name. So we're going to sort by last name. Let's run the query. And there we go. And you can see that the default, if we don't specify descending, the default is ascending order. So they're going to run A to Z. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.